So we're going to do the Vajrasattva meditation straight from the book, just because it's a good time of day to purify, and we're keeping our Thursday trend of doing meditation first. And um, and then it'll be nice and fresh in case you have any follow-up questions, and then we'll just move right on to 35 Buddhas. So that is the plan. If you want to get yourself into meditation posture, if you want to be able to read, excellent, but if you'd rather just listen, that's fine too. Sange chudam sange chunam lai janchu padu dani kapsuchi dagi chunyangi pe sonam gi rola penche sange jupa shu sange chudam sange chunam lai janchu padu dani kapsuchi dagi chunyangi pe sonam gi Rola penche sange jupa shu sange churam sogi chunam la janchu paru dani kapsuchi dagi chunyangi pe sonam gi rola penche sange jupa shu and so just let that connect And just stabilize for a moment in your posture, being really aware of your body. And begin to visualize that on your right side is your father or your father figure. On your left side is your mother or your mother figure. Whether they're living or dead, whether you have a good relationship with them or not, either side of you representing your family. Your enemies and those sentient beings who make you agitated are in front of you. Your friends and those you're attached to seated behind you. All other universal living beings in human form are surrounding you as far as you can imagine. And then visualize your objects of refuge, the merit field in the space in front of you, either elaborately or in the one aspect of Buddha Shakyamuni. Many into one or one into many have the sense that your refuge is embodied in the space in front, slightly above. As we recite the verse below, think that you and all sentient beings together are taking refuge in the three rare sublime ones, and we generate the power of dependence. I forever take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha in in all three vehicles, in the Dakinis of secret mantra yoga, in the heroes and heroines, in the empowering goddesses and the bodhisattvas, but most of all, I take refuge in my holy guru forever. I forever take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and in all three vehicles, in the Dakinis of secret mantra yoga, in the heroes and heroines, in the empowering goddesses and the bodhisattvas. But most of all, I take refuge in my holy guru forever. I forever take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and in all three vehicles, in the Dakinis of Secret Mantra Yoga, in the heroes and heroines, in the empowering goddesses and the bodhisattvas, but most of all, I take refuge in my holy guru forever. And think, generating the power of regret, 
almost every action I do, 24 hours a day, is motivated by worldly concern, attachment to the comfort of this life. Nearly every action I have ever created has been non-virtuous, the cause of suffering. Not only that, but I've also been continuously breaking my pratamoksha, bodhisattva, and tantric vows. Worst of all, I've created the heaviest of negative karmas in relation to my virtuous friend, getting angry at them, generating wrong views, having non-devotional thoughts towards them, harming their holy bodies and disobeying their advice. Having these negative imprints on my mental continuum is unbearable. It's as if I've swallowed a lethal poison. I must practice the antidote right away and purify all these negative karmas immediately without a second's delay. In this way, generate strong feelings of urgency and regret. Urgency without anxiety, regret without guilt, thinking physically, verbally, and mentally, what needs to be purified. physically, verbally, and mentally, things that have happened today or things that are on your mind from the past. And remembering impermanence and death. Think, many people my age or younger have died. It's a miracle that I'm still alive and have this incredible opportunity to purify my negative karma. Death is certain, but its time is most uncertain. If I were to die right now, I would definitely be born in the lower realms because I could not practice dharma there I would remain in the lower realms for countless eons. Therefore, how unbelievably fortunate I am to be able to purify my negative karma right now without even a second's delay by practicing the Vajrasattva meditation refutation. By practicing the Vajrasattva meditation recitation, we can purify absolutely anything and everything. And then reinforcing the power of dependence, we add bodhicitta and think, but I'm not practicing this Vajrasattva purification for myself alone. The purpose of my life is to release all hell beings, hungry ghosts, animals, humans, demigods, gods, and intermediate state beings from all their suffering and its causes and lead them to unsurpassed enlightenment. In order to do this, I must first reach enlightenment myself. Therefore, I must purify all my negative karma immediately 
by practicing the Vajrasattva meditation recitation. So expanding that power of refuge independence to include everyone. And letting your initial refuge visualization dissolve and absorb. Now shift the visualization to above the crown of your head. Seated upon a lotus and moon seat are Vajrasattva, father and mother. Their bodies are white. Each has one face and two arms. He holds a Vajra and bell. She a curved knife and skull cup. They are embracing each other. The father is adorned with six mudras, the mother with five. He sits in the Vajra posture, she in the lotus. Vajrasattva is your root guru, the holy mind of all the Buddhas, the Dharmakaya, who out of his unbearable compassion that embraces you and all other sentient beings, appears in this form to purify you and all others. Thinking in this way, your mind is transformed into guru devotion, the root of all blessings and realizations of the path to enlightenment. And so stabilize that visualization, connecting it with guru devotion. On the moon disk at Vajrasattva's heart stands a hum, surrounded by a garland of the hundred syllable mantra. A powerful stream of white nectar flows from the hum and mantra garland, and you are cleansed of all sickness, spirit harm, negative karma, and obscurations. So as that purifying nectar flows down and through, we reinforce the power of the remedy by adding the mantra recitation. Un Vajrasattva Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasattva Deno Bhadishna Dido Me Bawa Suto Kayo Me Bawa Supo Kayo Me Bawa Ano Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siri Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Siram Shriyam Guru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vadra Mame Mutsa Vadra Bawa Mahasamaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajrasapa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasapa Deno Bhadisha Dido Me Bawa Suto Kayo Me Bawa Supo Kayo Me Bawa Anarakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vadra Mame Muta Vadra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vadra Sapa Samaya Manu Balaya Vadra Sapa Deno Padisha Dido Me Bawa Sudo Kayo Me Bawa Supo Kayo Me Bawa Anarakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Shriyam Guru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagam Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sapa Deno Parishta Dirome Bawa 
Sudo Kayo Mebawa, Supo Kayo Mebawa, Anorakto Mebawa, Sawa Sudi Me Prayatsa, Sawa Kama Sutsa Me, Sidam Shriam Kuru Hum, Ha 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 Ho, Bhagawan, Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe. Om Padrasava Samaya Manupalaya Padrasava Deno Padrisha Jito Mebao Sudo Kaya Mebao Supo Kaya Mebao Hanorakto Mebao Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Siddham Driyam Guru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhago Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Padrasava Samaya Manupalaya Padrasava Deno Padrisha Jito Mebao Sudo Kaya Mebawa, Supo Kaya Mebawa, Hana Rakta Mebawa, Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsam, Nidam Triyam Kuru Hum, Ha 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 Ho, Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame, Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe, Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manukalaya, Vajra Sava Dena Vajra Dita Mebawa, Sudo Kaya Mebawa, Supo Kaya Mebawa, Hana Rakta Mebawa, Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutsam, Nidam Triyam Kuru Hum, Ha 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 Ho, Bhagawan Sawa Tata Kata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Sava Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Supo Kaya Me Bawa Anarakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prayasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha Ha Ho Bhagawa Sawa Tata Kata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Sava Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Supo Kaya Me Bawa Anarakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prayasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sinam Dream Kuru Hum Ahau Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sava Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Sukho Kaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Sinam Dream Kuru Hum Ahau Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sava Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Kaya me bawa suku kaya me bawa hana rakta me bawa sawa siri me prasa sawa kama sutsa me sinam shriyam kuru ha ho bhagawan sawa tata gata vajra mame mutsa vajra bawa mahasa maya sapa ahum pe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sava Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Sukho Kaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sinam Shriyam Kuru Ma Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutha Vajra Bawa Mahasa Maya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sava Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Sukho Kaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sinam Shriyam Kuru Ma Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasa Maya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sapa Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Gaya Me Bawa Supo Gaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sinam Shriyam Kuru Ma Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasa Maya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sapa Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Gaya Me Bawa Supo Gaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sinam Shriyam Kuru Ma Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasa Maya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sapa Dena Bhadi Shadi Sama Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahas Maya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sapa Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Supo Kaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sinam Shriyam Kuru Ma Ho Bhagam Sama Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahas Maya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sapa Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Supo Kaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sama Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sapa Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha Ha Ho Bhagawan Sama Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sapa Samaya Manapalaya Vajra Sapa Dena Bhadi Shadi Dami Bawa Sudo Kaya Me Bawa Supo Kaya Me Bawa Hana Rakta Me Bawa Sawa Siddhi Me Prasa Sawa Kama Sutsa Me Sinam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha Ha Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Musa Vajra Bawa Mahasamaya Sapa Ahum Pe 
Om Bhajasavasamaya Manapalaya Bhajasavatena Bhajasadi Ramibhuwa Sudukaya Mibhuwa Sukukaya Mibhuwa Anurakta Mibhuwa Sawasiddhi Nagrasa Sawakama Sukhumek Siddham Shriyam Kurum Haho Bhaga Samachata Gata Bhaja Mamingza Bhaja Bhava Mahasamaya Sava Ampe Om Bhajasafa Samaya Manu Palaya Bhajasafa Deno Bhadishadi Rome Bhava Suto Kaya Me Bhava Suko Kaya Me Bhava Anurakta Vasava Siddhi Me Prayata Sava Kama Sutta Me Siddham Triyam Kuru Hum Haho Bhagava Sava Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bhava Mahasamaya Sapa Ahumpe. And think that from the crown of your head, Guru Vajra Sattva says, Child of the race, all your negativities, obscurations, and broken and damaged pledges have been completely purified. Generate strong faith that all is completely purified, just as Guru Vajra Sattva has said. and generate the power of restraint or resolve, refraining from creating negativities again. Think, before Guru Vajrasattva, I vow never again to commit those negative actions I can easily abstain from, and not to commit for a day, an hour, or at least a few seconds, those negative actions I find it difficult to abstain from. And so thinking specifically, physically, verbally, mentally, what behaviors can change. Promising yourself, promising Vajrasattva, practical plans. And Guru Vajrasattva is extremely pleased with your pledge. Vajrasattva, father and mother, melt into light and dissolve into you. Your body, speech, and mind become inseparably one with Guru Vajrasattva's holy body, speech, and mind. And think in emptiness, there is no I, creator of negative karma. There is no action of creating negative karma. There is no negative karma created. Place your mind in that emptiness for a little while. In this way, look at all phenomena as empty. They do not exist from their own side. With this awareness of emptiness, we dedicate the merits. Think due to all these merits of the three times collected by all the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, myself, and all other sentient beings, which appear to be real from their own side, but which are totally empty. May the I, which appears to be real, but is totally empty, achieve Guru Vajrasattva's enlightenment, which appears to be real, but is totally empty and lead all sentient beings 
who appear to be real, but are totally empty, to that enlightenment, which appears to be real, but is totally empty, by myself alone, who appears to be real, but it is also totally empty, non-existent from my own side. And then we finish with our usual dedication prayers. Janju Sancho Rimpo She Ma Ke Panam Ke Gyuchi Ke Pan Yam Pa Me Pa Yam Gone Gondu Pelwa Sho Doni Dawa Rimpo She Ma Ke Panam Ke Gyuchi Ke Pan Yam Pa Me Pa Yam Gone Gondu Pelwa Sho Okay, so that's Vajrasattva with the long mantra. Tuesday, we did Vajrasattva with the short mantra and the simple form of the deity. And so now you've done the um, more complicated form of the deity and the longer mantra. You can just do plain white light flushing you through, or you can add those more elaborated visualizations like we talked about on Tuesday. Either works. Um, a, a good general rule is to have enough detail that your mind is engaged, but not so much detail that your mind is getting tense trying to squeeze or force anything. And with the speed of the mantra, a good rule is say it fast enough that you have to stay alert, but not so fast that you start to get anxious. So if you're doing it slowly, 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 while you're getting used to it, that makes total sense. But if you keep going slowly, even after you've memorized it, even after you can go quickly, sometimes what will happen is you start to drift and vague out. So keep it peppy enough to keep you alert. Keep enough detail to keep alert. But um, with both speed and detail, regulate yourself day by day. Some days you'll have more mental space for more speed and detail and some days less. So just kind of strike a balance um, day to day and meet yourself where you are. So do you have any questions about Vajrasattva before we move on to 35 Buddhas? Or comments or additions or anything? I was reading in that little booklet that you suggested on the meditation. And he talks about um, the mani that Vajrasattva is the manifestation of the primordial sphere. Mm. I wasn't really clear about that other than my understanding was the primordial sphere is the Buddha. You know, and yeah, so I was a little confused. Are you, which what book are you looking at? That little yellow one that FPMT no, centers? The, which one are you looking at? The one you suggested on. Um, the meditation on Vajrasattva. Right, the book that has, it. yeah, it, uh, by um, Kempo Yeshi Punsok, yes. that one? Yes. Kempo yes. Yeshi Punsok. Yes. Okay. That one, you know, that one is not necessarily our tradition. And so we often don't say the primordial Buddha or from the primordial sphere. That terminology is kind of unique, um, not unique, but specialized to their tradition, which isn't to say we disagree. We don't disagree, but we don't really frame it in that way. Um, mm. Sometimes we talk about the primordial Buddha as being Samatabhadra as well. And what's kind of being described is the essential nature of emptiness is pure. The essential nature of emptiness is pure. And from that purity manifests the Buddhas. So it, it's one of those kind of more esoteric branches of the conversation, which I might not be able to satisfy you adequately about. But if you generally think the primordial sphere is related to the fact that emptiness is by nature pure, maybe that at least helps you have a, a little bit more context. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Venerable Yantan. I just wanted to check that I'm thinking about this correctly. You know, we always say like ignorance is, you know, grasping at, especially for prasangika, like grasping at the self of persons and grasping at the self of phenomena. Is the correct way to think about that grasping, you know, at the intrinsic or inherent self of persons, meaning that I see a person just existing in isolation by themselves? Is that where we're going? 
Well, usually when we're talking about grasping at the self of persons, we're mainly talking about our own persons. Um, and we're and when we're talking about grasping at the self of phenomena, we're talking about the aggregates and everybody else's generally. Generally, that's the, the division. So when we're talking about like innate self-grasping, that's the root of samsara, we're talking about viewing the I in our own mental continuum. The conventional eye that's not causing any trouble, that one that conventionally exists, and then superimposing inherence on that. So it's viewing the eye in our own mental continuum and holding it to exist inherently. That's the root of samsara, which is that form of self-grasping, which all other forms kind of blossom from in an unfortunate way and from which self-cherishing then gets reinforced and fed. And was that your question? Yeah, it was. And it's it is that I'm trying to work through, you know, my own sense of self, um, that innate sense of self um, that I think sort of exists. It exists by itself. Like I don't really think it's, you know, my body or just my mind or even a combination. I really think there is some persisting thing that endures. And it's that idea that I'm trying to undo that there's actually something that I think just exists by itself, not dependent on anything. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. And then yeah. I translate that same understanding to the grasping itself of aggregates of tables, computers, people. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's like we, we have that feeling. Um, sometimes it helps to think about how we feel like we're the same person as we were when we were a child. We've just developed learning and experience to it. But if you actually met yourself as a child, you'd be like, that's a child. That's a whole different kind of person. That's not me. There's some characteristics in common. There's a continuity. There's trends. There's habits. But that's not me. That's a little kid. But yet there is some part of us that feels like there's this unchanging core that gets stuff like added on top of, but it's like somehow other than body and mind, extra or additional or the boss of. And it's that feeling from which all the problems stem. And it does feel like it's both permanent and one thing and kind of spontaneously existent, unrelated to causes and conditions. It has all that kind of flavor to it. But then when you think about like, the aggregates like feeling, for example, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, in the abstract feel like, yeah, they're based on causes and conditions, they're based on a continuity, they're related to the inside and the outside world. But before examination, it feels like feeling is inherently existent. This is me, this is how I feel. Feeling exists in and of itself, divorced from context. And then a little bit of like prodding, you're like, oh, actually, no, that's not true. But like the, the sense of it is that. So this is the kind of sense that we have on everything. And that's kind of the filter that we cover everything with. And so if you can work on it with yourself and then elabor elaborate out um, and also work on it with yourself and see that it's that fundamental confusion is why we do the wrong thing in the first place. If we didn't have that fundamental ignorance then we wouldn't have negative karma created because it wouldn't make sense to behave in those ways. There'd be a baseline understanding of interconnection. So hurting another person would be like one hand hitting the other. It doesn't make any sense. It's part of the same system. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, Genoa, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, I was just wondering because I learned uh, that mantra differently. I learned it. The so different just, classes on a different syllable. Yeah. So it was, it was there, there are many correct ways. There are many correct ways. Okay. So yeah. the Haruka Mama Munza, it's that's a that's oh, just oh, a different Haruka. Way. Oh, you learned it yeah. with Haruka. Right, right, right. And there's also Padmasatva Samaya Manapalaya. Yeah, that okay. so there's gonna be um different emphasis on different syllables, but also on the Vajrasattva part of the mantra, that will have variations based on which sadhana it's related to. So if the rest of the mantra is exactly the same, but just one syllable is like Haruka or Padma or some variation, it's still a base um, Vajrasattva mantra of purification. It's just tied to another sadhana. So for example, if you do Tara, 
Tara is related to the Lotus family, the Padma family of Amitabha. So when there's a purification section in Tara, it'll say Om Padma Sapa Samaya Manopalaya Padma Sapa Deno Parishta, like that. So Padma is the reference to the Padma Lotus family, but it's still a purification mantra. So it's variations on a theme and they're all equally as effective, but that's why you'll find some variation with that one word at the beginning and at the end of the mantra. Thanks. And it should be noted that my pronunciation is going to be terrible. It's just going to be. Um, what we do is we try to mimic the teacher that gave us the empowerment. Often it's a Tibetan teacher speaking Sanskrit syllables. So it's uh, it's going to have the like Sanskrit with a Tibetan accent with an American accent on the top. And then however you're interpreting that. So you do your best. But really, the main thing is connecting with, I'll say it as best I can, but the main thing is faith. Yeah, and connecting to the unbroken oral tradition doesn't mean that your version of the oral saying of it is going to be identical because every person is different. So you do your best, but don't get too tight about it. And all of us should try at some point to learn a little Sanskrit and, or a little Tibetan or both. If we have time and space, it will help with our prayers. But don't put too much pressure on yourself about that kind of thing. Just do your best. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, there was a question in the chat that said, are all Vajrasattva initiations highest yoga tantra? No, there's a Vajrasattva Jainong that is a lower tantra, which is single deity. Um, it's less common, uh, but it happens. Um, the, it's also completely fine to do Vajrasattva without an initiation because at no point do you arise as Vajrasattva. You don't ever arise as Vajrasattva in that little sadhana, do you? There's no point where you think I am the deity. You don't think that it's not in there. So that's one reason. Another reason is that purification is kind of a pervasive practice across all forms of Tibetan Buddhism. And so it's the special case where the deity in union is normally reserved for highest yoga tantra practitioners, but is okay for us as regular people without that to visualize uh, on top. So it, it's like the special case for seeing yourself as the deity is Shakyamuni Buddha. Remember at the very beginning, you can see yourself as Shakyamuni Buddha when you do a Shakyamuni Buddha meditation, even if you've never received the empowerment. That's the one special case. Every other case, you have to have this specific empowerment. This is the special case where you have a highest yoga tantra image, but you can use even before the empowerment. So it's not pervasive. It's not allowed in other contexts, but Vajrasattva specific, it's okay to use the highest yoga tantra form even before your empowerment. And like we said, Tuesday, if for some reason that form is problematic or confusing, just use single deity. That's absolutely fine. Um, then uh, the other question was, is there a detailed explanation somewhere of the ha 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 ho related to the five wisdoms? Um, there's a brief explanation of the whole long mantra at the end of the Vajrasattva Sadhana, which I think is in the drop box, and I'll double check tonight to make sure it's in there. But the five wisdoms, um, that's the ha-ha-ha-ha-ho part, is related to the five Buddha families, which are related to purifying the five aggregates, transforming the energy of the five elements, um, five times a day, uh, five afflictions, all the, all the fives all the fives, moving from their diluted, distorted form to their purified and transformed aspect. Yeah, so that's a five Buddha families reference. Yeah, yeah uh, let's see, any, any, anything else, Vajrasattva, Ish? I have, yeah. a, I have a question here. Hi, Venerable. Thank you so much for uh, all you, your effort to, to teach us. Thank you. I have a question. I wrote it down because it was uh, this morning. I uh, uh, I was in a in a, in subway and I saw uh, I was um, doing my practice because I have one hour in in, in subway. So um, I take it to the path and I was um, uh, doing a, a little mantra recitation of. Uh, white uh, Tara mantra and I was really very concentrated and 
I, I, saw, I saw a, a little bug on the person in front of me. And somebody else has told her, oh, you have a bug, you have a bug. And the bug somehow um, hide. Uh, and I, I said, oh, it's here. It's here. I just show her because I didn't want the bug to be like crushed or something. And somebody else just took it and took, ah, killed yeah. the bug. And then he said, ah, well done. And everybody over there said, well done. And I was like, oh my God, it, I'm in Matrix and there's something wrong here. Everybody is like, I was devastated. I don't know if. It just helped you become more aware of the negativity out there by doing practice. Is that kind of what's I, happening? Yeah, I feel, I feel like, yeah, that is, I don't know if I, as you said, maybe I'm more awake of everything is going on in samsara because otherwise you are you're habituated and you you don't take your distance it's yeah it looks like I, I think that you you have to be careful not to take things too personally right like it's so difficult to take responsibility for all sentient beings while still giving them full responsibility for their life right because what we want is boundaries not barriers we want really strong sense of commitment to sentient beings without getting like all up in their business being controlling or thinking everything is my fault or everything's going wrong and i have to fix everything in the world specifically me all by myself because you'll get overwhelmed it's it's a mentality of the vast vision you want the really wide focus that holds awareness of the suffering of the world and the suffering of the little insect in front of you and the person you come home to at night and the dog on the street, everything. You're holding awareness of it, but you're not just seeing the suffering. You're seeing the fact that they also have Buddha nature and the potential to be free from that suffering. So your commitment is... What can I do to be a strong condition to bring out their Buddha nature and help them develop it? How can I be a strong condition to minimize or prevent their suffering? While knowing that you are only one of countless conditions. Right? So you're wanting to be a strong, powerful condition, but at the same time, you know you're only one of countless conditions. So it's not your fault when things go wrong, but it's also not your triumph when things go well. You just are happy when things go well. Mm -hmm. And it's disappointing when things don't, but it's to be expected. It's samsara. It's amazing when anything goes well. Lean into that, right? Like it's to be expected that the world's going to hell. That's to be expected. Isn't it remarkable anyone is ever nice to each other? Like that deserves a party every time. You know, it's amazing anyone has a little flicker of altruism or thinking about the welfare of others. It's remarkable, especially given how few people have a spiritual path and a strong ethical foundation. Nevertheless, their Buddha nature is showing itself by all these little acts of kindness. And the thing on this subway is like, from the perspective of these worldly people, they thought they were helping this person by squashing the bug. It shows how important education is, but it also shows they thought they were helping. There was some motivation of wanting to help there. There's more to the story than just the tragedy. There's the tragedy of their ignorance. There's the tragedy of the death of that insect. There's the tragedy of their act of killing and their rejoicing in that. That is a tragedy. But there's also the celebration of it was a moment of people coming together for one person's discomfort. It was, you know, a shared moment between strangers. You know, it was many things at once. And everything is like that. So, you know, there really are no ultimate heroes or ultimate villains. Yeah. Keep keep the keep the vision big and wide and holistic. Does it does it make sense? Yes, I was thinking to myself maybe yeah, I shouldn't have to say like something to to save the bar <laughs> because it but we got as you said, yeah, yeah it's uh, yeah, it's really kind of narcissistic to take all on myself. Yeah. Uh, like it's narcissistic. Uh, you do like your best, kind of right? You know, you, you do your best while still kind of 
being in sync with the laws of the land and the social mores of our time, but still we already are radical just by being Buddhist. There's a radicalness to our preservation of life for our care of sentient beings that already is radical and how to balance that on a day-to-day basis. You just have to be very present. Uh Yeah. Uh Be very present and you do your best. Definitely try to save lives, but also think, everyone in that scenario is making a strong karmic connection with one another. And so make strong prayers that that karmic connection eventuates in a positive way in the future. Um, Lama Yeshi is famously quoted as saying, even a bad karmic connection is better than no karmic connection. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, it's true in our life, right? There's people in your life who, when you first met them, you did not like them at all. It was a bad mm-hmm. karmic connection. It was old stuff ripening and you just did not like each other but there was a connection there and then time went by and for whatever series of reasons you got to know more about them they got to know more about you and you softened Mm -hmm. towards each other and now you might even be friends Mm -hmm. you couldn't be friends if there wasn't once a connection of some kind Mm -hmm. so everybody in that scenario has a connection with one another and that can ripen in a positive way especially if you make prayers to that effect So if the life of the bug is not saved, still the moment is not lost, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be very advanced with some parts of your practice, but then there's just parts of everyday life and common Mm -hmm. sense that you might be missing. Yeah. And so it's important to always have a really strong humility and modesty that realizes that growth doesn't happen evenly across all areas can be up here with one thing and down here with another and you can learn something from anybody whether they're a buddha or not and you have no idea who a buddha is we might be the very last sentient being in the whole universe and everything else around us is buddhas trying to wake us up we might be the last one left how embarrassing right they're all rooting for us they're like come on train your mind okay i'll send a friend i'll send an enemy i'll send a disaster i'll send flowers let's see let's get her to wake up yeah and the whole universe is collaborating to get you to wake up you might be the last sentient being left. You never know. Yeah. So, you know, uh, keeping that kind of modesty and that humility that really listens deeply for the wisdom of wow. everyone will keep you steady and grounded. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so uh, we're going to do 35 Buddhas. And I think a lot of you know this practice. Um, so if there's stuff that you've always been meaning to ask, uh, hopefully I can help you out. But just to make sure we're on the same page, um, what we prostrate, why we prostrate, and what we prostrate to in this context. This is all from Venerable Tibetan Chudron. She says the text that we will now study is called the Sutra of Three Heaps. So the three heaps or collections of activities that we do in conjunction with it are confessing, so revealing our unskillful actions, rejoicing, and dedicating. So this sutra is found within a larger sutra called the Stack of Jewels Sutra in the chapter called the Definitive Vinaya. Nagarjuna wrote a commentary on this sutra called the Bodhisattva's Confession of Ethical Downfalls, which is the name we often use in English to refer to this practice. So we say sometimes just 35 Buddhas, but what we're talking about is this Bodhisattva's Confession of Ethical Downfalls which is a little section from a sutra from the Buddha, okay? So why do we need to purify? Because our mind is full of rubbish. <laughs> Have you noticed that your mind is full of all sorts of illogical thoughts, disturbing emotions and obsessions? These afflictions are not the nature of mind. They are like clouds covering the clear sky. They are temporary and can be removed. It is to our advantage to remove them. Why? Because we want to be happy and peaceful and to be free from suffering, and we want others to be so as well. All of which is probably self-evident to us at this stage in our practice, but just remembering why is it that we purify, I think a lot of it can boil down to why don't we live up to these high aspirations we hold? We have these amazing values of compassion and kindness, but that doesn't mean we live in accordance with them all the time because we're minds are full of rubbish and distractions. So mind training is key, but mind training on its own is not enough. We need mind training plus purification. So prostrations may be physical, verbal, and mental, and we have to do all of them. 
So physically, we can do short or long prostrations. When we do the purification practice with the 35 Buddhas, it's nice to do the long ones. If you have physical limitations and can't bow down, just putting your palms together in front of your heart is considered a physical prostration. So physical prostrations include the long and the short version. So both begin with putting our hands together. The right hand represents method or the compassion aspect of the path. The left hand represents the wisdom aspect of the path. So remember, we talked about Tuesday, the male side, the female side, the method side, the wisdom side, those sides will remain a continuous theme throughout all of Tantra. So it's not like you'll need to relearn that. Right hand, method, male, left hand, wisdom, female. By putting our two hands together, we show that we're trying to accumulate and then unify method and wisdom to attain the form body and the truth body, the rupakaya and dharmakaya of a Buddha. So the result of method male side is the form body. The result of wisdom female side is the truth body. We need both. Tucking our thumbs inside our palms is like coming to the Buddha holding a jewel, the jewel of our Buddha nature. The space in between our palms is empty, representing the emptiness of inherent existence. So physically, this is a long prostration. And so we start at the heart, then crown between the two eyebrows, throat and heart. And then when you go down, you do hands first, then knees, then all the way down and all the way up again. And there's a difference between a prostration hand and a greeting hand. So in Tibetan Buddhism specifically, the prostration hand is like this with the thumbs going in, tucked inside. When you see the thumbs outside like this, this is a greeting from a Tibetan Buddhist perspective. So it's going to mean different things in different traditions, but you'll see people um, doing like this with the thumbs out as a way of, you know, being respectful and honoring and saying hello and any number of things, but it's not a prostration until the thumbs go in. So this is what a long prostration looks like from the side. Okay, so crown, brow, throat, heart, all the way down and then up like that. And then uh, this is from the front, just in case you're not used to it. So you see the thumbs inside. Yeah, and then crown, brow, throat, heart center, and then hands down first, then knees, then all the way down, and the hands up and over. And then you finish it off with the same. Okay, so when you prostrate, you keep your feet together, not separated, um, but also not like you're doing an army exercise. You fold your hands at your heart with the thumbs tucked between the palms. So the meaning of putting your folded hands on your crown is that it causes you to create the merit to achieve the crown pinnacle or ushnisha, one of the Buddha's 32 holy signs and 80 holy exemplifications. According to Kabje Babanka Rinpoche, touching folded hands to the forehead purifies the negative karmas collected with the body from beginningless rebirths. It creates the cause to achieve the holy sign of the clockwise curled tuft of hair at the center of the Buddha's eyebrows, for which unbelievable merit is needed. It also creates the cause to achieve the Vajra holy body. Touching the folded hands to the throat purifies negative karmas collected with the speech from beginningless rebirths and creates the cause to achieve the Vajra holy speech. Touching the folded hands to the heart purifies the negative karma collected from the mind from beginningless rebirths and creates the cause to achieve the Vajra holy mind. So what to think is when you put your folded hands on your crown, I'm prostrating to the numberless Buddha's Dharma Sangha, which are manifestations of my root guru. Forehead, I'm prostrating to the numberless statues, stupas, scriptures, which are manifestations of the guru. 
throat. I'm prostrating to the numberless Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, which are manifestations of the root guru. Heart. I'm prostrating to the numberless statues, scriptures, stupas, which are manifestations of the guru. When you lie down, I'm prostrating to the 10 directions, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, statues, stupas, and scriptures, which are manifestations of my root guru. And when you put your hands over your head, you think that you're prostrating to all of them. This means that from your place, wherever you are, you are prostrating to every single holy object that exists in all 10 directions. Each time you prostrate, it creates unbelievable merit. Okay, so that's a lot, yeah. Um, you can just think, with my body, speech, and mind, I prostrate to Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Okay, body, speech, mind to Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. That is plenty. Um, when you're doing 35 Buddhas, you're kind of having in the back of your mind all of that that Lama Zopa Rinpoche has said, basically that everything you're prostrating to is a manifestation of the guru. So that premise is the premise to explore because that's the repeated premise, no matter what the variation is that you're specifically prostrating to. So each of the 35 Buddhas has the specific thing that they're purifying and has the specific vows they made when they were on the path, just like the medicine Buddhas. But thinking that they're manifestations of the guru does what? What do you think that does? Or why? Give me a what or a why would you do that? And what about staff teachers, tangas? Yeah, go ahead. I have an idea because uh, in Long Green, they you see that they say uh, 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 to be uh, not grateful, but my guru. Oh, the the words are mixing up in my mind, but the. Um, Holding guru more precious than everything else is the way to. Uh, this is beautifully said, but I, I, I don't remember. Yeah, it's guru is the there. first thing that you, yep. in your path, you, you have to be devoted to. Yeah, look, it's uh, the guru thing is a big thing, and you know, even in the Vajrasattva practice we just did, you know, it's talking about the heaviest possible negative karma is in relationship to the guru. And it can sound like if you make the teacher mad, you're going to get punished. And that is not what's being said. Okay. It, you know, it's not like we're in Catholic school with like grumpy nuns who like didn't want to be te school teachers and they're like mad at the kids. And so, cause they're full of resentment and, you know, whack them with rulers when they talk in class, not that vibe. Okay, not those stereotypes, not those cultural references. The teacher, remember that what we're really talking about is anything that has been a catalyst for us to hear our own wisdom. Anything that has been a catalyst for us to hear our own wisdom is the guru ness that we're talking about, which is the Dharmakaya mind of all holy beings, all enlightened beings, trying to get us to wake up and to transform and to purify. So the first or the easiest aspect is the human teacher that explains the Dharma to you, an actual flesh and blood teacher. But such a teacher, whether they're a Buddha or not, is not necessarily even the issue here. What we're talking about is a gateway to the divine. And what else is a gateway to the divine? Dharma texts themselves. What else is a gateway to the divine? Holy objects whose shape and form was worn through holy minds and then created by regular people, right? So statues and scriptures and tankas and all these holy objects are like batteries of merit, not from their own side inherently, but because they were built through the collective work of all sorts of enlightened beings and then the ordinary beings trying to do their best to make that shape happen. OK, so when you see like a stupa and you think that's the manifestation of the guru, something really interesting can happen to your mind. What is the guru you're connecting to? What is the object you're looking at? That You have to open up the gateway for it to be a gateway. But these holy objects are so strongly charged that they're more likely to get to your heart than if it was just an ordinary building or something. Yeah, because the power that comes from their side dependently arisen is the power from enlightened beings and beings on the path. 
So you're using the fact of them to build momentum into your practice and into your life. So if you're doing your practice walking around a regular building, it's good to move. Movement is important. Our bodies need to move. But if you're doing your practice walking around a stupa, it's going to probably have more oomph. Yeah. And that oomph that, you know, for lack of a better word, is because of the power of the object. But the object only has power because of the ingredients of it. So when you're prostrating and you're thinking all of these gurus, all of these Buddhas are manifestations of the Guru Buddha, particularly this one I'm prostrating to and that one I'm prostrating to and this one I'm prostrating to, you're trying to connect with the guru-ness, right? As well as using that fact that you've met a real life person who spoke to your heart as a way of kind of personifying the divine to make it more accessible for yourself. Does that make sense? Ish? Yeah. So again, whenever you're getting stuck on guru concepts and layers of guru concepts, I can't recommend enough reading the prayer calling the guru from afar. Just keep reading calling the guru from the far, the long version. It really helps us understand the layers of guru. And when you're when there's all this heaviness about you know putting down the guru or heresy or whatever it's not because the guru buddha is ever going to leave you or give up on you or be mad at you it's that by you developing that attitude you're creating your own blockages and walls to feel that kind of catalyst for your wisdom to awaken so you've set up a roadblock it's harder for you to hear not that they've left you they'd never leave you it, so just get the direction correct, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so jump in if you get questions, but we'll just unpack some of the basics here. So the simple way to visualize is to arrange the 35 Buddhas in rows with their aspects corresponding to the five Buddha families, and then with the medicine Buddhas below them and offering goddesses below them. So quote, simple way, but if this is too elaborate, you can just think Shakyamuni Buddha embodies all of them. Yeah, many into one, that's fine too. But this simple way is simple as opposed to like um, the vision from Nagarjuna where they're kind of arranged in a circle and they're all holding different implements. There's a about three or four different arrangements of the 35 Buddhas that you'll find. Even if you did like a quick Google search 35 Buddhas and then looked at what images popped up, you'd see these in all sorts of different formations. And it's all the same 35 Buddhas, but some of them are depicted more elaborately and moved around. So it's easiest for us in the beginning, particularly to do it this way in rows, but just know that there are many correct ways. So at the top, we have Shakyamuni Buddha with Chenrezig at his heart and a Hri at the heart of Chenrezig. And then flowing from him, we have Vajrasattva, single depiction here. We have Kunrig, which is very helpful for death and dying practices, for bardo intermediate state practices. We have Namgyalma for long life and Verachana related to purity of the body. So these figures are all purification um, or purification adjacent practices related to purifying body, speech, and mind, related to long life, related to death and dying. So they're all there at the top, but you don't need to think of them all at the top if that's too elaborate for you. But when you see the image, that's why they're there. They're also purification deities. And then when we get into the 35 themselves, the first row is six Buddhas in the aspect of Akshobhya with the same mudra of Shakyamuni Buddha, right hand in controlling the earth, left in the mudra of concentration. They're all blue, except for King Lord of the Nagas, whose face and neck are white, while the rest of his body is blue. So there he is. The next seven are in the aspect of Verachana, white in color, then Ratnasambhava, yellow in color, then in the aspect of Amitabha, red in color, and in the aspect of Amoga City, green in color. Okay, so when you look at these, you can be thinking what each one of them particularly purifies, 
but that can be a lot and it's a lot of learning. So you can also direct yourself just in accordance with the colors. So blue, you, the blue row, you can be thinking, I'm purifying everything related to anger. White, I'm purifying everything related to ignorance. Yellow, I'm purifying everything related to pride. Red, I'm purifying everything related to attachment. And green, I'm purifying everything related to jealousy. So you can orient it that way, and that can help. When doing the 100,000 frustrations, mm -hmm. um, is it just 100,000 or is it 100,111? Um, usually it's 100,000 plus 10%, yeah, for making up mistakes. So yeah. Right. yeah. So, so it's that, okay. And then um, um, there's a version where you just do this with your hands rather than that, and that's okay, yeah? Yep, that's yeah. okay. Okay. And um, as I've gotten older, I don't do the prostrations anymore. I did them for a long time, but now I just say them. Mm -hmm. And I should have my, my palms at my heart when I do it yeah, for the, whole, yeah, for the, the whole, whole time. Yeah, if, you're, if your knees are getting grumpy with you um, and you're not doing the full or even the short prostrations, two palms together. If you can still put your two palms together, put your two palms together. For, for, the, for the, the entire time. Because that's a still a physical prostration and you're still okay. wanting to purify yeah. physical negativities, mental negativities and verbal negativities. So you're physically, verbally, mentally doing something simultaneously. And then it's an incredibly efficient practice. And you'll notice that even Lama Zopa Rinpoche, after he's shown the aspect of the stroke and one side of his body looks weaker, he will still get the weak hand up into that position. So as long as we're physically able to, we should, two palms together. Okay. And then, um, the, wait, what was my, I had one more. Oh yeah, so sometimes I get tired of saying it, like my voice just gets tired. <laughs> so is it, is it okay to, you know, do like stay whisper or is it really better to, to voice it? Is there a difference? Or sometimes I just forget and I, I'm just doing it in my head. You know, and I go, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, you know, I get tired or whatever. I've been doing it a long time. So is there a range of like, well, this is, does it matter? Kind of? Well, definitely at least whisper because you want to um, verbal purification. Okay. So at least whisper. Okay. Um, you know, some sadhanas, there's parts where you don't even need to whisper because it's all visualization. This is not one of those. You need to be saying it the whole time to really maximize the power of the practice. If you're saying it loud, the benefit is that, uh, you know, more beings might be able to hear you and have imprints. But if you're getting worn out, just under your breath. Yeah. Okay. Just and when you're when you're still physically able to go all the way down and all the way up, say the name of that Buddha as many times as you can, all the way down and all the way up, you know, and maximize the best you can. But well, it's one I, of do, I do a lot of them. You know, I do it on my mala, so I do like twenty one for each one, and I say it twenty one times for each Buddha. So I'm saying it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not physically prostrating because right. I'm old. two palms together. <laughs> Yeah, palms together. Yeah, yeah, back in the saddle with your two palms together. Yeah, okay. with the thumb. thumbs together. Those are helpful tips. I can clean it up a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, a nice if you're really wanting to emphasize purification, which I think is really helpful, especially if you're feeling like you know a lot, but it's not sinking in, or you're having trouble penetrating the meaning of something. There's just like a block or, you know, stuff in your life just isn't flowing. Always is a good time to be doing some purification, but if you're wanting to like emphasize it for a while, 35 Buddhas in the morning, Vajasattva at night. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like, never feel like this is a chore, feel like it's a gift because it's such an efficient way to get tons purified. Um, in the chat, it says, why is it called the Bodhisattva's confession of ethical downfalls when you don't seem to be purifying the details of the Bodhisattva vows? Um, it's because you want to be a Bodhisattva, you need to purify. 
So it's with a bodhicitta motivation that you're purifying, as opposed to just purifying for the sake of not wanting to suffer in the future. You're purifying for the sake of purifying and developing your mind to complete Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. So it's the bodhisattva's way of purifying, um, and it purifies everything. Yeah. Which is not to say that it restores, right? You don't restore your bodhisattva vows, for example, until you do a restoration prayer, but it purifies the mistakes of having transgressed them, as well as purifying all your body, speech, and mind, everything. It's a really, really powerful practice. Um, so it says, why Why does it say in the practice, I confess all my negative destruction actions separately um, at the end when it seems like that's what you just did? Um, the practice has all four opponent powers complete. Yeah, so you, we want the power of regret explicitly in there. The saying of the Buddha's names, the prostrating and the visualizing are part of the power of remedy. Yeah, power. So it's not like they're all in order, right? So you have a bit of refuge at the beginning, just a verse said three times, and then you have the power of the remedy. And then you have the power of regret with that long prayer. And then um, the power of resolve in that long prayer. So um, all four opponent powers are complete in the practice. Um, um, and celestial waters and the deity of celestial waters. The specifics of the 35 Buddha is probably easiest to just look in the chapter. Um, it goes through them one by one. Um, listening to the recording is okay if you're saying it along. Yeah, so have it in front of you and try and say along. But the recording is really helpful if you don't have it memorized um, because it'll act as a prompt. So I thought that I would just um, put the recording up and um, you guys can have a look. And if you need to stretch <laughs> or if you feel like, okay, I'm going to be doing the practice now, then just put your two palms together and say along with the recording. Okay, so here we go. Establish the visualization in the space in front. Connect with the presence of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas being present, in particular the 35 Buddhas of Confession. Connect with refuge. Connect with regret. and begin with the multiplying mantras. Om Namo Amenju Shri E Namo Su Shri E Namo O Tama Shri E Soha Om Namo Amenju Shri E Namo Su Shri E Namo O Tama Shri E Soha Om Namo Amenju Shri E Namo Su Shri E Namo O Tama Shri E Soha O Cham Din Jai Dei Jin Jai Padra Jam Payam Da Pa So Pe Sangye Rin Chin Gya Tso La Cha Tsa Lo Cham Din Jai Dei Jin Jai Padra Jam Payam Da Pa So Pe Sangye Rin Chin Gya Tso La Cha Tsa Lo Cham Din Jai Dei Jin Jai Padra Jam Payam Da Pa So Pe Sangye Rin Chin Gya Tso La Cha Tsa Lo Om Namo Bhagavate Ranu Ketu Ratsaya Tathagataya Ahati Samyak Sambudaya Tayata Om Ratne Ratne Maha Ratne Ratna Binsaye Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Ranu Ketu Ratsaya Tathagataya Ahati Samyak Sambudaya Tayata Om Ratne Ratne Maha Ratne Ratna Binsaye Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Ranu Ketu Ratsaya Tathagataya Ahati Samyak Sambudaya Buddha, Tayata, Om Ratne Ratne Ma Ratne Ratna Busy Soha. Homage to the confession of a Bodhisattva's downfalls. I Throughout all times, take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I 
Throughout all times, take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. I, throughout all times, take refuge in the Guru, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha. To the Guru, Teacher, Bhagawan, Tathagata, Arhat, Perfectly Complete Buddha, Glorious Conqueror, Shakyamuni Buddha, I prostrate. To Guru, Teacher, Bhagawan, Tathagata, Arhat, Perfectly Complete Buddha, Glorious Conqueror, Shakyamuni Buddha, I prostrate. To Guru, Teacher, Bhagawan, Tathagata, Arhat, Perfectly Complete Buddha, Glorious Conqueror, Shakyamuni Buddha, I prostrate. To Tathagata, Thoroughly Destroying with Vajra Essence, I prostrate. To Tathagata, Thoroughly Destroying with Vajra Essence, I prostrate. To Tathagata, Thoroughly Destroying with Vajra Essence, I prostrate. To Tathagata, Radiant Jewel, I prostrate. To Tathagata, Radiant Jewel, I prostrate. To Tathagata, Radiant Jewel, I prostrate. To Tathagata, King Lord of the Nagas, I prostrate. To Tathagata, King Lord of the Nagas, I prostrate. To Tathagata, King Lord of the Nagas, I prostrate. To Tathagata Army of Heroes I prostrate, to Tathagata Army of Heroes I prostrate, to Tathagata Army of Heroes I prostrate. To Tathagata Delighted Hero I prostrate, to Tathagata Delighted Hero I prostrate, to Tathagata Delighted Hero I prostrate. To Tathagata Jewel Fire I prostrate, to Tathagata Jewel Fire I prostrate, to Tathagata Jewel Fire I prostrate. To Tathagata Jewel Moonlight I prostrate, to Tathagata Jewel Moonlight I prostrate, to Tathagata Jewel Moonlight I prostrate. To Tathagata Meaningful to See, I prostrate. To Tathagata Meaningful to See, I prostrate. To Tathagata Meaningful to See, I prostrate. To Tathagata Jewel Moon, I prostrate. To Tathagata Jewel Moon, I prostrate. To Tathagata Jewel Moon, I prostrate. To Tathagata Stainless One, I prostrate. To Tathagata Stainless One, I prostrate. To Tathagata Stainless One, I prostrate. To Tathagata Bestow with Courage, I prostrate. To Tathagata Bestow with Courage, I prostrate. To Tathagata Bestow with Courage, I prostrate. To Tathagata Pure One, I prostrate. To Tathagata Pure One, I prostrate. To Tathagata Pure One, I prostrate. To Tathagata Bestow with Purity, I prostrate. To Tathagata Bestow with Purity, I prostrate. To Tathagata Bestow with Purity, I prostrate. To Tathagata Water God, I prostrate. To Tathagata Water God, I prostrate. To Tathagata Water God, I prostrate. To Tathagata Deity of the Water God, I prostrate. To Tathagata Deity of the Water God, I prostrate. To Tathagata Deity of the Water God, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Goodness, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Goodness, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Goodness, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Sandalwood, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Sandalwood, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Sandalwood, I prostrate. To Tathagata Infinite Splendor, I prostrate. To Tathagata Infinite Splendor, I prostrate. To Tathagata Infinite Splendor, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Light, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Light, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Light, I prostrate. To Tathagata Sarolis Glory, I prostrate. To Tathagata Sarolis Glory, I prostrate. To Tathagata Sarolis Glory, I prostrate. To Tathagata Son of Non Craving, I prostrate. To Tathagata Son of Non Craving, I prostrate. To Tathagata Son of Non Craving, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Flower, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Flower, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Flower, I prostrate. To Tathagata Pure Light Rays, clearly knowing by play, I prostrate. To Tathagata Pure Light Rays, clearly knowing by play, I prostrate. To Tathagata Pure Light Rays, clearly knowing by play, I prostrate. To Tathagata Lotus Light Rays, clearly knowing by play, I prostrate. To Tathagata Lotus Light Rays, clearly knowing by play, I prostrate. To Tathagata Lotus Light Rays, clearly knowing by play, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Wealth, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Wealth, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Wealth, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Mindfulness, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Mindfulness, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Mindfulness, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Name, widely renowned, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Name, widely renowned, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious Name, widely renowned, I prostrate. To Tathagata King, holding the victory banner of foremost power, I prostrate. To Tathagata King, holding the victory banner of foremost power, I prostrate. To Tathagata King, holding the victory banner of foremost power, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious One, totally subduing, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious One, totally subduing, I prostrate. To Tathagata Glorious One, totally subduing, I prostrate. To Tathagata utterly victorious in battle I prostrate. To Tathagata utterly victorious in battle I prostrate. To Tathagata utterly victorious in battle I prostrate. To Tathagata glorious transcendence through subduing I prostrate. To Tathagata glorious transcendence through subduing I prostrate. To Tathagata glorious transcendence through subduing I prostrate. To Tathagata glorious manifestations illuminating all I prostrate. To Tathagata glorious manifestations illuminating all I prostrate. To Tathagata glorious manifestations illuminating all I prostrate. To Tathagata all subduing jewel lotus I prostrate. To Tathagata all subduing jewel lotus I prostrate. To Tathagata all subduing jewel lotus I prostrate. To Tathagata arhat perfectly complete Buddha, King Lord of the Mountains, firmly seated on a jewel and lotus I prostrate. To Tathagata arhat perfectly complete Buddha, King of the Lord of Mountains, firmly seated on a jewel and lotus I prostrate. To Tathagata arhat perfectly complete Buddha, King of the Lord of Mountains, firmly seated on a jewel and lotus I prostrate.
the seven medicine Buddhas. To Bhagawan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly complete Buddha, renowned glorious king of excellent signs, I prostrate. To Bhagawan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly complete Buddha, king of melodious sound, brilliant radiance of skill, adorned with jewels, moon and lotus, I prostrate. To Bhagawan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly completed Buddha, stainless excellent gold, illuminating jewel who accomplishes all conduct, I prostrate. To Bhagawan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly complete Buddha, glorious supreme one free from sorrow, I prostrate. To Bhagawan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly complete Buddha, melodious ocean of proclaimed dharma, I prostrate. To Bhagawan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly complete Buddha, king clearly knowing by the play of supreme wisdom of an ocean of dharma, I prostrate. To Bhagawan Tathagata Arhat, perfectly complete Buddha, medicine guru, king of sapphire light, I prostrate. All you 35 Buddhas, 7 medicine Buddhas, and the others, as many Tathagata Arhat, perfectly completed Buddha Bhagawans, as there are abiding, living, and residing in all the world systems of the ten directions, all you Buddha Bhagawans, please pay attention to me. In this life and in all the states of rebirth in which I have circled in samsara from beginningless lives, whatever negative actions I have created, made others create, or rejoice in the creation of, whatever possessions of stupas, possessions of the sangha, or possessions of the sangha of the ten directions that I have appropriated, made others appropriate, or rejoice in the appropriation of, whichever among the five heavy negative karmas without break I have done, caused to be done, or rejoiced in the doing of. Whichever the ten non-virtuous paths of action I have engaged in, caused others to engage in, or rejoiced in the engaging of. Whatever I have done, being obscured by these karmas, causes me to be born as a sentient being in the hell realm, in the animal realm, or in the preta realm, in an irreligious country, as a barbarian, or as a long-life god, with imperfect faculties, holding wrong views, or not being pleased with the Buddha's descent. In the presence of the Buddha Bhagawans, who are transcendental wisdom, who are eyes, who are witnesses, who are valid, and who see with omniscient consciousness. I admit and confess all these negative actions, I do not conceal them nor hide them, and from now on in the future I'll abstain refrain from committing them again. All Buddha Bhagawans, please pay attention to me. In this life and all other states of rebirth in which I have circled in samsara from beginningless lives, whatever roots of virtue I have created by generosity, even as little as giving just one mouthful of food to a being born in the animal realm, whatever roots of virtue I have created by guarding morality, whatever roots of virtue I have created by following pure conduct, whatever roots of virtue I have created by fully ripening sentient beings, whatever roots of virtue I have created by generating bodhicitta, and whatever roots of virtue I have created by my unsurpassed transcendental wisdom, all these assembled and gathered and combined Together, I fully dedicate to the unsurpassed, the unexcelled, that higher than the high, that superior to the superior. Thus, I completely dedicate to the highest, perfectly complete enlightenment. Just as the past Buddha Bhagawans have fully dedicated, just as the future Buddha Bhagawans will fully dedicate, and just as the presently abiding Buddha Bhagawans are fully dedicating, like that I too dedicate fully. I confess all negative actions individually, I rejoice in all merits. I urge and request all Buddhas, may I achieve the supreme, holy, peerless, transcendental wisdom. To the conquerors, the best of humans, who are living in the present time, who have lived in the past, and who will likewise come, all those whose qualities are as vast as an infinite ocean, with hands folded, I approach for refuge. The General Confession Who who la, woe is me. Great Guru, Vajadara, all other Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who abide in the Ten Directions and all the Venerable Sangha, please pay attention to me. I, who am named... Circling in cyclic existence from beginningless time until the present, overpowered by delusions such as attachment, hatred, and ignorance, by means of my body, speech, and mind, have committed the ten non-virtuous actions, committed the five heavy negative karmas without break, and committed the five nearing heavy negative karmas without break. I have transgressed the vows of individual liberation, transgressed the vows of bodhisattvas, and transgressed the samaya of secret mantra. I have been disrespectful to my parents, disrespectful to my Vajra masters and my abbot, and disrespectful to my spiritual friends living in ordination. I have committed actions harmful to the three rare sublime ones, abandoned the holy dharma, criticized the Arya Sangha, harmed sentient beings, and so on. These and many other non-virtuous negative actions I have done, have caused others to do, have rejoiced in others doing, and so forth. 
In the presence of the great Guru Vajradhara, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who abide in the ten directions, and the Venerable Sangha, I admit this entire collection of faults and transgressions that are obstacles to my own higher rebirth and liberation, and causes of cyclic existence in the lower realms. I do not conceal them, and I accept them as negative. I promise to refrain from doing these actions again in the future. By confessing and acknowledging them, I will attain and abide in happiness, while by not confessing and acknowledging them, true happiness will not come. Through the force of reciting the names of the 35 Confession Buddhas and the Medicine Buddhas, through the power of their pure prayers and vows, through the power of your regret and the other opponent forces, and through the power of your having done these prostrations, nectar and light rays descend from the holy bodies of the Buddhas. All the negative karmas, defilements, and imprints collected on your mental continuum from beginningless time are completely purified. Generate strong faith that your mind has become completely pure. The Buddhas then dissolve into one another. The medicine Buddhas up into the karma family. Into the lotus family. Into the jewel family. Into the Buddha family. The Vajra family. Into Shakyamuni Buddha. Into you. And dedicate for complete enlightenment Remembering the emptiness of the three spheres, agent, action, object. Okay, done. <laughs> All right. So that practice is powerful. Um, do it if you feel inspired to. Tuesday is going to be our last class of the series, and then there'll be a weekend course, not this weekend, but the following weekend, which will focus on purification. Um, there's going to be a slightly different style, and it's going to be all online this time. We're not having an in-person component, so um, there'll be some like journal exercises and personal reflection stuff, and it's going to be more workshoppy, but there'll also be lots of um, Vajrasattva and once a day 35 Buddhas and we might even do some medicine Buddha if people are in the mood for medicine Buddha so it'll be just kind of a, a practice extravaganza of purification and merit making and then I'm done um, with public stuff at Vajrapani so that's uh, that's what's coming up next and uh, I see some of you have sent me a couple of emails and I will get to them when I can um, I've got a backlog of humans asking for things so I will get to it when I can and I hear you and you're in my heart and I haven't forgotten about you so um, thank you so much for all of your committed efforts to really stick with this course it's a brand new course and I really hope that people connect with this book because I think it's really helpful so Thank you all, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Learn so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you, dear Venera.